So Tucker Carlson had some takes about the John Fetterman uh, interview that took place by the uh, by NBC. We talked about this yesterday. It was some of the grossest like a, uh, a weaponization of ableism I've seen in uh, my many years of being in the media. And uh, Tucker Carlson had some things to say about that. Let's take a look at like a brief synopsis of it, like one of the juicier bits of it. The guy's reading his answers off a screen with the reporter three feet away. Yeah, he's like, wow, he can't hear. Back in my day, people used to be able to hear. Back in my day, you would not have a president that could not hear or a politician. That's the definition of impairment. And again, this is a very serious job. But others in the media scoffed at the idea that was a problem at all. In fact, far from being a problem, it was an asset. What's ironic is he's literally reading from a fucking teleprompter. That's crazy. He's reading from a teleprompter himself. But others in the media scoffed at the idea that was a problem at all. In fact, far from being a problem, it was an asset. Because if the equity agenda means anything, it means that incompetent people ought to be in charge. That's equity. Tucker Carlson claims that the NBC interview shows Fetterman reading his answers off a screen with a reporter three feet away because he's a huge liar who has contempt for his viewers and knows that his bosses don't care how dishonest he is. Let's take a look at the larger uh, uh, picture here because he does, he makes inferences that John Fetterman is like a cyborg or something. Like he makes it seem as though John Fetterman is like a, a more machine than man at this point because he, he needs hearing aids, which in a weird way, kind of makes it cool again. Like they're, they're just making him look cooler. I don't know. Uh, but uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look at what Ch Tucker Carlson and had to say. To Tucker Carlson tonight. John Fetterman is a trust fund kid. He took money from his parents deep into middle age when he decided finally. Tucker Carlson saying someone else is a trust fund kid is so fucking awesome. That's crazy. Your name is literally Buckley McNear, dude. Your middle name is Buckley and McNear. Tucker Buckley McNear Swanson. Your last name is Swanson. You literally grew up, went to a liberal arts college. You are the poster boy of the lacrosse, bro. Holy fuck, dude. That is insane. It's like me calling out someone for running ads at the top of the hour every hour, for, uh, especially if it's a 60-second ad break. Let's continue. Finally, what he would like to do with the rest of his life, which is to be the U.S. Senator from Pennsylvania. The problem is fate intervened and he can now no longer speak. He had a bad stroke and we feel bad about that. Everyone does. But because do you? I don't think you do, brother. Because of that stroke, Fetterman now needs electronic assistance in order to communicate with other people. He can't talk on his own. It's not a right-wing conspiracy theory. It's not what do you mean can't talk on his own? You're making it seem like he can't talk. No, he can't hear you, he has a hearing impairment as a consequence of his fucking stroke. That is bananas. He is trying to make it in the exact same way that NBC did. He's trying to make it a larger issue than it actually is. And even that is supposed to be temporary, if I'm not mistaken. But it doesn't matter. He's just lying. He's lying to, and, and trying to make it harder than it actually is or worse than it actually it's is. It's real. In fact, it's so real, his campaign concedes that it's real. Oh, fuck. Never mind. He said, uh, you might think I'm lying, but it's real. I love when Tucker Carlson says some of the most unhinged shit, right? He'd be like, the Democratic Party is lying to you. They're actually, the Democratic Party is doing a complicated immigration scheme, uh, taking immigrants and paying for them to travel all the way from Guatemala to your backyard in Texas, specifically so they can turn your neighborhood into a quinceanera. Now, you might think that that's untrue, but it's real. He always says that. He will say some of the most unhinged shit and then tag that with, now you might find this unbelievable, but it's true. And it's basically just a trust me, bro. Source, I made it up. That's true. Fetterman uses a software program to understand the words of those around him and to formulate his responses to those words. In other words, to talk. Now, to be perfectly clear, this software is not a hearing aid. Fetterman doesn't need a hearing aid because he isn't deaf. He's not hearing impaired. Instead, this program takes words and then rearranges them into language that John Fetterman can understand because his brain can no longer do that for him. Now, that's sad. For transhumanists, though, it is thrilling. This is an amazing moment. This is Neil Armstrong on the moon. Here you have the, one of the most famous politicians in the country merging with a computer. This is the future they imagine. They're thrilled by it. But for everyone else, for the voters of Pennsylvania, for example, it does raise some obvious questions. For example, 
Where exactly does the software end and John Fetterman's consciousness begin? Okay. I had to I had to wait until the end of his rant to to mention something like this. It is so incredible that Tucker Carlson, whose audience average age is like 83, claiming that someone with a, some kind of auditory processing issue or like someone that needs hearing aids is a transhumanist cyborg. Then half of your fucking audience is a cyborg, man. Now, many of you will say this will backfire because like all of those conservatives will recognize that Tucker is shitting on them. They will not. Because there's nothing that conservatives love more than being fat and then looking at the TV man and going, that man's fat, I'm built differently. We saw this during COVID. They'd be like, oh, I don't need a vaccine, I'm in good shape. While simultaneously looking at motherfuckers that looked exactly like them or motherfuckers literally down the, the retirement home, down the hall in the retirement home that look exactly like them dying to COVID without taking the fucking vaccine. They don't recognize it. They don't recognize that they would also be considered half human, half machine cyborgs. They don't see that. They would be like, oh, yeah, that's, that's John Fetterman. They're going after Oz for denying the Armenian genocide now. Welcome to the long overdue U.S. recognition of the Armenian genocide. In the Senate, I'll continue supporting public education about this atrocity. It's deeply disturbing that Dr. Oz doesn't acknowledge the Armenian genocide. His refusal to do so is both offensive and damning. Wait. Dr. Oz denies it? That's crazy. Like, it is mind-boggling to me that Dr. Oz has not been hit with this when I, as a fucking Twitch streamer, who has never denied the Armenian genocide, get attacked for it every fucking day. Literally. I've never denied the Armenian genocide. Never. And motherfuckers will still be like, nah, you're Turkish. You definitely do. You do. Can you address why you are denied the Armenian genocide? I'm like, I, I haven't. But it is kind of crazy. I'd be surprised if Dr. Oz has openly denied it, considering that he uh, was, you know, raised in America. Yeah, when will Tucker cover this half man, half machine? Yeah. The average 500-year-old Tucker viewer and reading this Chiron on screen two inches from your face with bifocals while you got a pacemaker, hearing aid, and dialysis. Fuck them cyborgs. Yeah. Fetterman is a choom. And it's time that this chrome head gets what he deserves. He's about to go cyber psycho. And guess what? Night City has had one too many cyber psycho attacks. Bottom right gonk. I am not a gonk. Many people are saying that I'm being paid by Arasaka to make this kind of propaganda. Those people are lying. Dude, Tucker Carlson is uh, basically a test, okay? A stress, stress test on how insane you can get on the most popular news broadcast in America and still maintain your audience and brainwash them into believing whatever the fuck you're saying. I mean, after the anime milk jug titty hentai shit, uh, it, it was over for me. Once I saw the big milk jugs exploding milk jug porn, like once I heard Tucker Cross say those words, it was a wrap for me. That's when I realized like, you know, things are... Things are never going to be the same. We don't know. We can't know. But it's obvious that Pennsylvania could very well be sending a computer program to the U.S. Senate where inevitably it will be hacked. Yesterday, MSNBC. I mean, he's had so many crazy moments, actually, now that I think about it. He had, he had exploding milk jug porn. He covered the Ontario teacher with the big ass titties when he said the exploding milk jug porn. He talked about how the green M M&M and M wasn't fuckable enough. Like he the last two days ago, he had uh, uh, what is it called? Raw milk? No, raw egg nationalism. The guy who like guzzles raw egg, but he's like a nationalist. I mean, he's just like total freak mode. He's he's had such insane fucking coverage. He sat down with John Fetterman and his thinking machine to assess where the man ends and the machine begins. And the initial impressions were not at all encouraging. Ball sack tanning. Uh, we had a monitor set up so that he could read. Yeah, he loves NBC now. Look at that. It, it, he, he normally rips NBC a new asshole. If this, was happening to, if this was happening to a Republican candidate, oh my Lord, Tucker Carlson would have something to say. Oh, my fucking Lord, dude.
heed my questions because he still has lingering auditory processing issues as a result of the stroke, which means he has a hard time understanding what he's hearing. Now, once he reads the question, he's able to understand. You'll hear he also still has some uh, problems, some challenges with speech. And I'll say, Katie, that just in some of the small talk prior to uh, the interview before the closed captioning was up and running, it did seem that uh, he had a hard time understanding our, our conversations. Well, good for her for admitting that. That's a rival channel. Don't watch a lot of MSNBC, but she should tell viewers that, and she did. And what she just told you is that before the machine was turned on, John Fetterman could not understand human language, not even... He said John Fetterman could not understand human language. Dog, if John Fetterman could not understand human language, then he wouldn't be able to read and understand human language. He would not be able to carry conversation. Language doesn't come only in the form of hearing someone. That is an insane way to cover this. It is so fucked up. He's literally trying to say John Fetterman is a cyborg. He only speaks in ones and zeros. The binary code. In small talk, but once the machine was plugged in, he sounded or the machine sounded nearly human. But don't worry, everything's going to be fine in the Senate as long as there's not a power outage. It's not like the electricity ever goes down in this country. We definitely have enough renewables to keep John Fetterman voting the right way for the next six years. Oh my God. Oh my fucking God. This is wild, dude. I mean, this, this like, <laughs> fuck. The, the level of ableism that is uh, going on in, in this kind of coverage is, is mind-boggling, okay? It's crazy. My man needs hearing aids, and therefore, he's now a robot. It's fucked up. Better build some more wind farms. That's the plan. But once again, to the credit of the MSNBC reporter, she did ask a follow-up. How do we know your thinking machine isn't going to break, John Fetterman? Can we see a doctor's report on this? Here's how that exchange went. Can voters trust that you will be able to do this job on day one? Yeah, of, of course. So you say you're on the road to full recovery, but right now voters really have to take your word for it. We've asked for your medical records. We've asked to have a conversation with someone from your medical team to interview your physician. You've declined those requests. Why? Well, I, I feel like we have been very transparent in a lot of different ways when our doctor has already given a letter saying that I'm able to serve and to, to be uh, running. I mean, respectfully, that letter from your physician, that was six months ago. Don't voters deserve to know your status now? Being on uh, in front of thousands and thousands of, of people and having interviews and getting around all across Pennsylvania, that gives everybody and the voters decide, you know, if they think that it's, it's really the issue. So he's reading that off a screen. And by the way, we're taking him at his word that there's not a staffer backstage typing out the answer. Dude, what the fuck? He's not reading the answers, you <laughs> He's reading the questions. That's crazy. He's just lying. I mean, it's why am I surprised? Oh my God, why am I surprised? Of course he's fucking lying. But that's so incredible. Like the 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 purposeful way in which he is misrepresenting what happened god that's so fucked up that's so insanely fucked i mean holy moly holy moly like they were it, it's not enough right like he can't they can't hit him on like oh he can't think good you know they can't say that they want to say that right they want to say that like oh his brain's not working well but they can't say that because he's competent in responding to questions, right? So now they have to just make shit up and be like, well, uh, is he actually capable of crafting sentences without reading from a staffer, potentially? He's not writing those answers. No one is writing those answers. He's the one who's fucking reading those questions and then responding. You think that fucking 37-minute attack ad that, that was full of some of the most disgusting, awful 
uh, uh, ridiculous, vicious, ableist attacks you've ever seen on a fucking candidate, you think that they wouldn't rip John Fetterman if someone else was writing his answers? That's crazy. To be honest, though, no one watching Tucker was ever going to vote for Fetterman anyways, though. Guys, do you think that Tucker Carlson's rhetoric is unimpactful? How many people in Pennsylvania watch him? How many people in Pennsylvania that would be like, you know what, this, this Fetterman guy, he does seem like an interesting dude. I mean, I don't fucking know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about much, but he doesn't seem like the regular Democrat will then turn around and be like, you know, I'm definitely not voting for him. Of course, it's impactful. This is the most popular broadcast that you have relatives of people that are going to go out and vote in Pennsylvania that are going to go and talk to their relatives and be like, yeah, we're not doing this. You know, don't do it. Don't vote for that guy. He's not competent. His brain doesn't work. At this point, fake news has become just a permanent staple. I mean, it always was right. But now now it's gotten to a point where it's just impossible to avoid. Every, every industry cuts it. Everyone does it. All the way from like tiny Stan culture microcosms all the way to fucking Tucker Carlson on the main stage. It's just how we operate now. It's such a weird, fucked up, awful way to live. How do we pass legislation to ban fake news? You kind of can't. You can't do anything. Because he himself can't formulate them. Now again... You can feel deeply sympathetic to John Fetterman. That's sad to watch. But this is a guy who wants to run the federal government in a body of 100, the most powerful legislative body in the world. And he wants to be a member of it. So over at CBS, reporter Ed O'Keefe asked the obvious question, quote, will Pennsylvanians be comfortable with someone representing them who had to conduct a TV interview this way? That's crazy. Fuck you, man. Ed Dude, NBC's going balls to the wall with this shit. Ed O'Keefe, like, what the fuck? In a normal world, in a normal planet, if these guys were, like, actually doing their fucking jobs, if these guys were actually doing their jobs, this guy would get suspended. Like, Ed O'Keefe is one of the top White House correspondents in the fucking nation, dude. Actual question, how is this different to Alex Jones? It's not. It's not. Like, there's a varying degrees of fake news. Tucker Carlson toes the line very well, very adequately. Um, and, but... People, even before Alex Jones uh, got his comeuppance, had actually, uh, you know, done similar things like Bill O'Reilly. Bill O'Reilly is responsible for the death, the assassination of an abortion doctor, an abortion provider. He made him the main villain every fucking night. What did he say? He used to say, killer, killer, doctor, tiller, right? Tiller, tiller, the baby killer. Same shit. He was actually fucking, uh, you know, that was the most popular broadcast at the time. Wait. Now, that's a mild way to put it, but it's certainly a fair observation. The guy's reading his answers off a screen with the reporter three feet away. That's the definition of impairment. And again, this is a very serious job. But others in the media scoffed at the idea that was a problem at all. In fact, far from being a problem, it was an asset. Because if the equity agenda means anything, it means that incompetent people ought to be in charge. That's equity. As New York City Councilwoman Rita Joseph put it, questions about Fetterman's profound brain damage are, quote, incredibly ableist. Profound brain damage. Profound brain damage. Dog, you fucking... What? He deleted the tweet? What do you mean? Motherfucker said profound brain damage as he's, like, literally reading a teleprompter off the screen. If a reading a teleprompter it implies you have profound brain damage, well, Tucker, you are the most brain damaged motherfucker, dude ableist we desperately need more diversity in elected office and that includes people with speech impediments well we desperately need that that is absolutely right but actually we're not talking about a speech impediment she's telling us he's got a stutter just like joe biden remember when they told you that joe biden's dementia was just a stutter <laughs> but dog Joe Biden's brain capacity has diminished. That's the difference between me and someone like Tucker Carlson. I'm honest enough to recognize, admit, and mention that Joe Biden's brain capacity has diminished beyond a stutter, okay? As a matter of fact, his stutter coming back is implicate is it part of the reason why uh, you can believe that his uh, brain capacity is diminished. Straight up. Like, not knowing exactly where he is at any given moment and, like, saying that he's in Iowa when he's in fucking Wisconsin or whatever, that, that's, a, that's indicative. That's indicative of a, 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 you know, cognitive function decline. It's bananas to try to cut that into John Fetterman's uh, unique predicament right now. But, of course, a speech impediment would not prevent Fetterman or Biden from understanding other people's speech. Huh. Investigative reporter Hunter Walker who writes for Rolling Stone and The New Yorker, 
answered that question with a question of his own. Hmm. Quote, would they treat a deaf person like this for needing assistance? Oh, so if you have questions about John Fetterman, you hate the deaf. You're a hearingist, bigot. Wait, what? Yeah, that is true. You do, though. He's literally trying to... Wait, why are they saying, don't question whether Fetterneck can do the job? Why are they... What? They're calling him Fetterneck? What? They talk about the growth on his neck. Did you just notice that? Oh, Fetterman has a bump on his neck. Okay, so they're saying he has like a tumor on his neck or something? Jesus Christ, dude. I don't know what else to say about any of this, dude. I mean, this is, is so trash. We're going to close down your bank account at J.P. Morgan, ableist. But again, it's not really relevant. Now he's tying it back to more tangible forms that like, or battles that like Tucker Carlson's audience is used to fighting and, uh, and, and saying like, it's cancel culture. Look, look, they're just trying to do cancel culture on you if you have reasonable suspicion that John Fetterman's brain is not working. Event to the Senate race in Pennsylvania. He even made a Kanye West reference to the J.P. Morgan thing. Because once again, John Fetterman doesn't have hearing problems. He's not deaf. This isn't deafness. This is brain damage. So the independents, Eric Michael Garcia, tried to tie up that loose end, and he used an analogy to do it. That's how really smart people talk. How is this any different, he wrote, from Tammy Duckworth or Madison Cawthorn needing a wheelchair? Oh, so John Fetterman being unable to talk without reading it off a screen, either from the software or from one of his staffers backstage, is exactly the same as being wounded in defense of your own country. It's a war injury. <laughs> yeah, Madison Cawthorn was wounded in defense of your country, too. No, it doesn't have to be the exact same, you fucking idiot. It's an analogy, and this is perfectly analogous. Yes, people have disabilities, including Tammy Duckworth and Madison Cawthorn. Also, senators need hearing aids. They're not fucking war injuries. Once again, Tucker Carlson picking apart a, 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 a piece of the argument being made without actually seeing the argument and then trying to fucking laugh it off, go in joker mode, and it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even fucking matter, okay? It doesn't matter because, like, his audience will eat it up. God, I hate this so much. <laughs> and then John Fetterman's wife, who came into this country as an illegal alien, by the way, wondered the same thing. And we're quoting, truly appalling. Have these journalists never heard of the Americans with Disabilities Act? Really curious to learn how they feel about wheelchairs and glasses. End quote. Really? So your questions about John Fetterman's mental health, the acuity of his brain, his ability to talk and listen and reason, use his higher faculties, those questions are banned by the Americans with Disabilities Act because he's not just an incompetent guy trying to take over the country. No, he's disabled. Over at Vox, Ian Milhouse. But he is. But he is. I don't get it. He is literally disabled. You spent seven minutes of the 60-minute broadcast shitting on his disability. He refuses to read the rest of the fucking uh, statements that talk about seeing aids and hearing aids, right? Tucker Carlson on his Pol Pot shit, dude. He's literally like, line him up. You wear glasses, we're going to put one in the back of your dome. He's just straight up. I hate it. I, I just, I hate it. I see this. It fills my heart with sadness makes me upset to see that this is the most popular news broadcast. And then I'm reminded that the, there are motherfuckers out there who hate me as much as I hate Tucker Carlson for shit that I say. They see what I have to say, whether it be every American, regardless of their political orientation, deserves health care and, 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 you know, workers deserve more uh, from their own labor. And they're like, dude, you are the fucking worst. I hate that. Sucks. Anyway, it's not... Oof. Heiser said he knows exactly how Fetterman's bigoted critics view people with eyeglasses. It's like the Kimmer Rouge. Quote, is it the position of NBC News? Wait, he did bring up Pol Pot. Wait, what the fuck? Fox, Ian Milheiser said he knows exactly how Fetterman's bigoted critics use his higher faculties. Those questions are banned by the Americans with Disabilities Act because he's not just an incompetent guy trying to take over the country. No. He's disabled. Over at Vox, Ian Milheiser said he knows exactly how Fetterman's bigoted critics view people with eyeglasses. It's like the Kimmer Rouge. Quote. 
Dog, he literally, oh my God, I can't, I, I don't know what to say. I, I, I despise this. I made the exact same joke before he did. Except that's what he's doing. The Fetterneck shit is unhinged. Well, last week we told you in some great detail about a man called John Fetterman who was running for the U.S. Senate from Pennsylvania. What we didn't mention at the time was Fetterman's running mate because honestly we didn't know he had a running mate. But we learned the identity of this running mate yesterday when Fetterman for the first time in memory removed the filthy DNA covered hoodie that as it turns out conceals quite a bit underneath. So beneath the foul smelling hoodie was this protrusion. Foul smelling hoodie? Dude, what the fuck? This is like no holds barred, you know what I mean? He cannot be legally this mean, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter. He can. He 100% can. I mean, I'm this fucking mean to, uh, to Republicans, right-wingers, you know what I mean? As you can see, it's not quite a goiter, but it's definitely bigger than a pimple. It's a lump. But what sort of lump? That's really the question. Does this lump have its own Instagram? Does it plan to run for statewide office in Pennsylvania? Don't laugh. A party that put Joe Biden in the White House is perfectly capable of building a whole campaign around any insentient lump of flesh. In fact, they're running John Fetterman, who can't even talk. So keep your eyes on this lump. It could very well run with Kamala Harris in... It's fucking bananas, dude. I don't know anymore. I mean, this shit hurt. I can't watch Tucker Carlson for longer. It just pisses me off so much.